Hi there, uh, this is Robert and I'm going to talk about RBIM and I've been writing Imagine Hopes and Dreams and even though this is maybe not the optimal way of presenting RBIM let's do some exploring so if you imagine hope and dream and uh, wishes or even have desire and you want that so since you want that we ask the question how do you make it real? how make real how do you go from you know nice idea nice idea there's a uh, oh cool uh, <clears throat> so we're using RBIM to build a bridge between and we do that by making a memory of this whatever you want to happen in the future because this is the future future memory sounds cool right well depends on who you ask obviously because memories people say well you know well basically everything is a memory so we can explore this with RBIM to find a way to access this future memory to make it real and people go like <clears throat> what do you mean real it hasn't happened yet well the brain doesn't know the difference anyhow so if you create a future memory where whatever you want to happen either what you imagine a hope dream or desire has already happened and your brain starts to produce an experience and people go like wow okay cool oh yeah yeah I can understand that it makes an experience cool okay but how does it help me in RBIM we do we build a future memory we don't do what most people do well I got a problem I worry 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 have anxiety we have a lot of issues and stuff you know you know call you know whatever in life goes on you know, a lot of stuff can happen in life so we have all these you know well issues we can say so most people go like hmm I want to change my problem or my I don't want to worry or I don't want to have this uh, shit going on in my life so I try to change that so I try to change once you change, you activate something that's called a comparison mode. I will try to use yellow color and see what happens. So you use what calls a comparison. What that means is when you activate this comparison, comparison, The problem starts a loop in what we call a recursive loop. It means it starts to go back into it in itself. So it starts to go round and round and round. It calls a recursive loop. And this means that you go back to the problem and go back to whatever solution you want to have and that doesn't work. So what do we do in RBIM? Well, that's a cool thing. We build a future memory. Nice! I got a future memory! But since I don't have my experience and it's not really yet, well, it's not like it's going to happen either. So we build one. And when you focus on that, what I discovered over the years when I was developing RBIM is that if you focus on the future memory, I write focus here, focus, that the body or the brain, if you like, produce a response to this. So you focus on the future memory, the body and the brain, produce a response the response is called a vestibular response and that's a big one right it's called vestibular it's not spelled like that when I write it sounds cooler to spell it like vestibular <laughs> and, uh, 
So with Power BI, I, I focus on my future memory, and my body then produces a response to that future memory somehow. Cool. And that's because it produces, the focus produces a very slight response in the body called space. And people go, what do you mean by space? Well, I will change paper for a moment here. So I will... Space. The final frontier. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Only the women has gone there before. Uh, this is from Star Trek, by the way. And uh, I'm a science fiction nerd, if you understand what that means. So, the body produces pain. Because if you have a, a face here with a smiley one, and this smiley one thinks about the future memory. In the future, they have a memory here. Ooh, cool, I have a memory. Something I desire and wish and hope for. Once you focus on that memory, the body here produce a response to that memory. And people ask, what's that response? The response the body produces, the body produces is a response. The response in RBM we name and call space. And what do you mean by space? Space is a relationship or relation or reference. So it means it's a relation to the memory. When you're thinking about the memory, the body produces space. Space is between you and the memory. The brain inside the head, you know, is a gray, gray mass, is then trying to understand this future memory. Okay, this, okay, uh, this guy now is focusing on the future memory. So the brain actually moves your consciousness, that means consciousness, it produces this consciousness most people call that self their self is then moving in relationship to the future memory and people go like oh, what do we mean by that well it actually this consciousness you can't touch because it's just existing inside of the head and since it just exists inside our hand, we can touch it, we can feel it, we, but it's there because we can reason and talk. I can even draw some ill-designed paintings here if you like, or write some bad spelling letters. And people go like, what do you mean by, you know, uh, RBIM? Well, it's a realization behavior integration model. It's about how the brain integrates and creates ongoing consciousness. And people go like, what do you mean by that? Well, once you're thinking about the future memory, the body produces a slight response inside your body that's called space. That space is a vestibular action. As I was writing, it's a focus on the future memory. Ooh, we produce a response. That response is space. Once you pay attention to this space, you pay attention. Ooh, and that's why we do the drills. Pay attention. We do drills, and the drills we do is either the hand drill, which mo many people think is uh, something really bad, but it's actually just moving your hand to produce a physiological sensation, space. And we do interflow, into flow. That's moving your body. And this is about to discover for yourself what this space is like for you. What is my space in relationship with this memory? Because the brain, when it thinks about that, when you think about that, you're actually moving yourself towards that memory. So you're creating a new context. Ooh, context. What's that? Well, context is how the brain navigates. It has context allows you to navigate to space. People go like, is this a space metaphor for, you know, uh, starships and stuff? 
Well, I mentioned did, did mention Star Trek, so obviously it has to be something with that also. It has to navigate, navigate through space. This is almost like you know the Jin and Yang symbol, you know, balance in life, all that stuff. So that's what I'm trying to teach you and other people to focusing on the future memory when we focus on the future memory future the body navigates there by creating space you pay attention to this space when you pay attention to this space the body and the brain then can produce you know chemicals stuff like that to produce what we call a solid memory. Once it produces a solid memory, which is again context, it's context, and it goes back to the space again. So, since the brain is not actually doing this. Uh, like we understand it, you know, how we represent the information. We understand how to do what we call a map like this. So I go back from to the first one. So we have something you imagine, you hope and dream, and wishes and desire you want in life. And the question we ask, how do I make it real? Well, I use RBIM to build a future memory. That's what we do, we build future memories. We build those, build. And when you build the future memory, you have focus on that. And while you focus on that, the body and the brain produces space. And since we focus on the space, we shift our attention, focus on the space. The brain then has time produce and navigate to this space. So it travels actually, we're building a bridge, as I was saying before. So this space and the response we have, we can then build a bridge to this future memory by using the vestibule or space. And we explore drills and so we can allow the brain to, you know, go there. So to create a solid memory. So that means when we have this memory, the brain has we have focus on the memory. We have in our self consciousness travel to this memory because we have to organize to space. And people ask, you know, that sounds kind of weird. You know, that sounds strange. So let's explore that a little bit, right? So what's going on? Well, if self is here, it exists in relation in relation to something. And the brain uses context to navigate which context in this case should be activated or active. Now after a while this creates memory and memory so if someone has a problem as I was writing from the top you have a problem, you worry, you have anxiety, you have life, you have phobia, you have traumatic experience, you have bad shit going on in your life and you're thinking about yeah I want to change that, natural reaction, I understand that if you start to try to fix that with somehow you know self-help and all this stuff you start to recursive loop, you try to fix it but to fix it you have to access portion of that and that doesn't work because you will go back and try to fix it again, the willpower over and over. So you start to think as many people do. Well, my unconscious is now is, uh, is stopping me. My unconscious mind is stopping me because the unconscious rules my life like people in our, what they call neuro linguistic program NLP. So they have to use hypnosis and strange stuff, uh, magic or, you know, whatever people call it, to, you know, find a way to fix it.
So what do we do? We don't do what people do in NLP. NLP says, well, you need to use hypnosis to change the problem people have, right? I will move it along. So people have a problem, and we need to use hypnosis or something to change that, and you know, fixing that somehow. And I say, what I do with Norman, we don't need to do that. We need to make people fixing on the future. Because everything, basically, what we can recall and all that, is a memory. It's a memory. So, what happens when you build a new memory, whatever is going on? Well, you build a new memory. Something you dream about. Oh, yeah, I want to feel like a world champion of the world. Or, I want to be legendary, awesome, like I like to say. And people go like, well, so how do I make that? Well, yourself is always yourself. It's always moving in relation to space. So to create, so it moves in space, in space, and between. And that space is context. So if you build a memory, so if you build a memory, that's content. And the thing here is when you build this kind of memory and you feel like a world champion and you uh, pay attention to the space and you let the brain start to build this future memory, it builds a new context and it builds content with that. So they build the context, the future memory, once it's building that, it creates the content also. And that means when you build this, and this is, you know, access through and building the bridge the RBIM way, uh, with the pay attention to the space and letting the body and the brain produce this action, what happens is that you as an individual, in the consciousness you produce will feel different. So the old memory is not active anymore. And since the old memory is not active anymore, it does, it's the brain and the body doesn't use that because you built a future memory to use today. Now, some people say, well, that sounds cool. I like that idea. But if I'm building a future memory, I'm building a future here, and it has not happened yet, has not, happen. The future memory has not happened yet. The thing here with the brain is that once you build that, it will feel real for you. So if you're talking about action, then your behavior shifts. Because you're acting from the future memory and the future experience, so your behavior starts to alter because your decisions changes. And since your behavior and decisions start to change, you behave and interact with the world differently. So when you're faced with a choice, let's call it choice, you're faced with several options here. You have several people coming to you as a business owner or something like that and they have great ideas. And all those ideas, you're thinking, oh yeah, that's cool, those ideas are really cool, but I don't know which one to take. Well, since you built a future memory, you're thinking about all those choices people present to you, and it's much, much easier for you now to understand, ah, since the future has not happened, but this is the experience I want to have, I can then choose the thing today that makes most sense to make this happen. Because it's easier to make the choice when you know what's going to happen in the future. And the thing with the brain is that it is able to produce the experience you want to have by making it real. So I go back again. So we have imagination. We can hope and dreams and wish and decide. We can call what people call daydreaming. This is daydreaming. Well, that's good, Sonny. But you can dream 
and dream, but nothing's going to be happen to you in your life. And that creates what people call limiting beliefs. I'm not good enough or something like that. That's happening the problem, so I'm not good enough, not not good enough or whatever. Oof, a lot of problems in life. Oof, mama, mama, yeah. And we, oh, and all these other things can, can happen. So we start to focus on the future memory. We build a future memory. We apply the bridge, build bridge here, we build a bridge. And we're utilizing the space between ourselves and the space. And something happens then when we do that. Now, I'm not expecting people to do this straight away. I expect them to struggle a bit because uh, what people want to do is this comparison. So people want to do a comparison to check for did I do it right or did I make it happen in the proper way or all that stuff. Because if you do the engage the comparison, you will have trouble the accessing the future memory. You will have trouble accessing the space and be aware of that. And the thing here is if you do this, that's a shortcut. So you can produce a new reality, make it real, so you can act upon it later on when you make a decision. So when you have a decision to make, you have a future memory built already, you have the experience, Ooh, you have the context and the content. So you have those two and the thing here is some people say, well, we need to change, as NLP had said, NLP said, people have an unconscious mind that runs a process that's what NLP is saying to people so they use hypnosis and a clever language pattern don't think about the language pattern you are using right now something like that that's hypnosis language patterning and they try to what well, everything is the, there is obviously something going on in the mind, but the, the key here is, is that the content is always a memory. So if we understand that what people experience today, whatever is going on in their life, is a memory. So this so-called unconscious mind process, some you know undefined. I don't know what that is, actually, I can't explain it. So this is no one else can explain it. Well, I can explain this song to you because it's a memory. So if you build a new future memory, everything that people talk about this unconscious mind process and all that stuff goes away. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do this fancy language either. Because if you build a future memory, the brain will use that to produce your desired wanted experience because we will bypass everything you are normally doing in your context and the content obviously the past memory because you have to recall something so if something happened for let's say 25 years ago 25 years ago this was an incident. Now this is how the brain works. 25 years ago. 25 years ago. Something happened. How? Oh, I hurt my knee and now life is sucks. And the brain then produce what we call scenario. So if something happens, the brain builds what we call a pattern. And this is the reason why all those conspiracy theories are out there. You know, it's a conspiracy out there. They are after me. They're because that's the brain how it works. We find something's going on in our life. Mm. And if then we find a similarity somewhere else. Ooh, that's kind of similar to this, what, what's, what's going on. And the brain tracks that. And 25 years later, 25, the memory you built contain all this information, Ooh, all this information. Oh man, 
How should I change all that? Well, the good thing is the brain collects that as a memory. So when you know that's a memory, it's a past memory. Once you know that it's a past memory, you go like, hmm, why should I change the memory of the past? Why not build a new memory? And people go like, well, if I build a new memory, new memory, I build a new memory, something I want to happen in the future. Cool. But how do I make sure this is going to be my new experience so that I don't use the past memory? Well, the thing here is, it's yourself. Yourself moves in relationship to space. So that means if you pay attention to the space that the new memory produces, You are then, you then become, or is, or becoming, or being, whatever you call it, the new memory. So in many ways you can say that as a consciousness, this is how you can explain consciousness for people, that your consciousness your consciousness now is the future memory because that's what happened in normal life you have a problem so since you have a problem people go I have this problem I have this problem so that means we have made some kind of identification to the problem and we try to confirm it and we don't want that obviously but we don't know how to change it and the pro problem is you can't change it because it's a memory and the and you can do that with a lot of using patterns and techniques and therapy and all that stuff but it takes a lot of time and it's uh, it's often not so effective so instead of that we build a future memory of your imagined hopes and dreams and all that stuff focusing your mind on that uh, pay attention to the space the body and brain produces to build the bridge to make your brain able to produce your consciousness so you yourself becomes the new memory and then you will have a new baseline for your decision making and you will have a new baseline for uh, experience and relate to the world because now this is contained in your own experience this future memory is not you know tainted or clouded by previous experience in your life so when you build a future memory the brain also starts to do this really cool thing so that you have this future memory People go, oh, cool, I have this new experience. Once you maintain that experience in your, in your, you know, your own self, this becomes a, what we call an iconic because it doesn't have any connection to the outside world yet, except your memory. And since you can then understand how did you create that through the space, so once you have the space, you can pay attention to the space and produce the desired content and context in your environment. So when you start to interact in your environment from this iconic or experience in your space, the, since you're holding this, what people call stable, because if you know the relationship to an object, like a pen, I know where this pen is located, and this becomes the same thing. You know where this new memory is located, so you can always become and interact with that. You can always run this memory and experience in your, for yourself. That means you become having a, an iconic experience. It means that whenever you're interacting with other people, job, home, family, relation, you're keeping the same experience. Uh, since other people around you, however, uh, don't know that. They can be somewhat perplexed or surprised or not. And this can happen. I had a girl. She came to my workshop. She entered a workshop with me. She was a mother of three. Mother of three. 
Now, she went for uh, six days with me. After six days, six days, she came home, and her kids then said, "What's going on?" Because they couldn't understand what's what happened. Because she, her mother, the mother in this case, she now felt different. But since the kids are and was, you know, uh, I don't know, the, the oldest kid was, I don't know, 17 years old, something like that. This was a surprise for them that their mother, they would known all their lives, suddenly felt different. She was more happy. She laughed. She smiled. And she most likely did something she normally never did with the kids otherwise. So, the change she went through, uh, which was not actually a change, she just had a new set of, you know, future memory. That altered her behaviors, altered her experience of life. She started to interact with the kids, and they didn't understand what was going on, because her mother, their mother was not different, because she was happy now. And that was a surprise to them. And that's what, what when we do this kind of stuff with our men, things that it can happen, because... When you have been living with someone for a long time and you change and you feel better and you have a more enjoyment of life. And so you make it real. Make it real. We do that using the RBIM bridge. System. We're building a bridge so we can have a way of connecting the space of the future memory. I have a future memory, I want to have a future memory here. Ooh, I want to, you know, like some say, well, I want to lose some weight. And you create a, a memory when you have lost the weight and you feel fine and you enjoy life. So you go, like, oh, this is enjoyable. You will enjoy and you create that and you pay attention to the space and you focus on that so yourself then becomes bridge to this future memory and when you build a future memory like this and you have that and you pay attention to the space your brain is able to produce the response you want to have and life becomes a little bit easier. So whatever has happened to you in life, you can build a new memory and stop using the old one. Much like uh, if you buy a new car, well, you tend to, you know, don't use the old one. You give it to someone else, your, you know, kids or neighbor or sell it for a, or just give it away, I don't know. And that's the RBM system. Whatever you imagine, hope and dreams, wish and desire for, you can make that real. And that's the thing I'm teaching here with RBM, to focus on the future memory, once you built it, to so create a bridge, so the space you pay attention to, you self can identify with this future memory. You bypasses the comparison mode, some as I call it, and you don't need to change the past memory. And instead of daydreaming, you can have something real instead. That's kind of cool, if you ask me. And I will stop there. And if you have any questions, if you have any questions. about what I just draw today, you can uh, post also in the comment on my website, which is, oh, I'll use the blue pen, that's a cool pen. NotNLP.com And people got confused by that sometimes. Well, is it NLP? No, it's not NLP. So, because RBM, if you ask me, replaces 
the price is NLP due to we understand that content runs your human experience or your consciousness. So to become aware of your own uh, <clears throat> brain and what it does and what it does not is to become aware of the, the memory creates reality and, and since the memory creates reality it also creates consciousness and once you become aware of this kind of process going on how the brain actually builds new experience in life you understand that you don't need to do an unconscious process because it doesn't exist what happens is that you have a memory that the brain has to recall so every time for example some people say well what do you mean by that well think about it every day you wake up you have this memory of what's going on in your life if you create a new memory the, the brain when it wakes up goes to like oh this is my experience now and this can happen in different ways some people when they do there was a one guy who did the treasure hunt and I will draw something about that too since this was this is really fun when I, when I do it that uh, he was a treasure hunter he was looking for a boat that sank the boat went, went down and uh, had a big treasure So the boat sank, lay on the bottom of the ocean for many years. And one guy said, every day, it, today we will find the boat. We will find the boat today, because they were looking for treasure. So every day he was saying that, today is the day we find it. Today is the day. Now he said that every day for 17 years, or something like that. 17 years is, one year is 365 days, to give or take a few. So that means he said that over 5,000 times. With every bit of enthusiasm and passion. Today we're going to find it. So every morning he woke up, he was like, today we find it. And the thing here is, after 17 years, they found it. Woohoo! They found it! And did you know what he was saying to the people he was, uh, that was working for him? I told you so! That we would find it today. And people go like, he's nuts, because you know, you can't think about it this way. The thing here is, when you create a future memory, you're acting about something that has not happened yet, but since you feel it's like it's real for you, it also changes your perception in how you interact with the world. And if you do things like this, stay motivated, passionate, and you know, woohoo, I'm going to find the treasure today, every day. That's kind of self-motivating without, you know, any pressure. So if that's useful for treasure hunting, it's probably useful for working out, uh, building a business, uh, uh, learning things in school and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I'm Robert. And I developed RBIM technology. That's what I did. And this is me signing off.